We're live, yeah. guys. We are Perfect. live. Way. Hey. So welcome, uh, everybody. It's uh, noon here in Frankfurt, 12 o'clock CET, May 12. Uh, we're well into the third week of, of this uh, four-week acceleration program. Uh, we have a date and time set for the demo day. Please note it down. It will be May 20th at 4 p.m. CET. Um, our five startups will be pitching their invest to, to investors. Um, our newsletter is coming out soon and you will receive invitations. But today we're, uh, we're here having a, a digital marketing, digital strategy, digital communication strategy workshop uh, with our strategic partners, D Firma, uh, the firma have been a par are the partners of Accelerator Frankfurt right from the beginning, uh, with Robert and Marco taking the lead. Today, Robert's here with us, and he will be guiding uh, Coin Rule uh, with their co-founder Oleg. Is here. So, um, without further ado, Robert, uh, please introduce yourself to to the viewers at home, and. What do you think CoinRoll will get out of this next uh, couple of hours? Yeah, thank you, Ram, for having me. Um, welcome to everybody. Um, yeah, just to give a short introduction on, on myself, I'm Robert, um, senior consultant at the firma. We are helping, yeah, we are helping different companies to more focus on consumers, but also on, on customers and employees to digitally transform towards them. Um, meaning we are developing different different digital strategies and communication and so on, um, building foundations and digital ecosystems for them. Um, my personal professional career um, started at Deutsche Bank, so I've been to Deutsche Bank for 16 years, so I'm a little bit familiar with some financial stuff at the end of the day. And uh, one of my last sessions was a VP for Innovation Management at Deutsche Bank, which is seven years ago. So I'm a little bit uh, con uh, familiar with all that different topics. Yeah. What uh, Corn Rule today will expect, um, we will give a short introduction in how to approach the market. So what are the basic instruments and functions, how to um, yeah, approach a market, how to um, reach a market and get a certain feeling and empathy for the different groups within this market. And this is what we'd like to develop with different instruments. This is basically it and it should help um, coin rule at the end of the day to um, reach the different objectives and targets. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. The floor is yours. The session is yours. Thanks a lot. Uh, yeah. I will make you uh, a co-host so you have full control of, over us. And uh, great. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So first of all, I would like to hear from Oleg. What is uh, who are you and what is uh -huh. coin rule? That would be great to hear. Sure. Fantastic. I'll say a bit about myself, about the company, and then I will show a quick demo of the product and kind of tell you a bit more about it as, as we go through that. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm Oleg Gerstein. I'm I grew up actually in Frankfurt, where our wonderful accelerator is based, uh, but I've been living in the UK since 2007. I came here to study, went to the University of Oxford, and then worked in banking for a few years, myself as well, at Citigroup here in London. Mm -hmm. And in 2016, I quit to start my first startup, which was a career mentoring platform. Did that for a few years. Uh, we were part of an accelerator at the time called Mass Challenge. And I met my current founders and we ended up like completely uh, changing course and starting CoinRoot together. Now um, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, so basically what CoinRoot is, is a platform that helps beginners who have some trading experience maybe, but really no previous experience in building any type of automations or more advanced mm -hmm. trading, that helps these users to build automated trading strategies. So if you want to uh, compete in today's financial market, uh, you need some type of advanced tools because the majority of the market is driven by bots, by algorithmic traders, and by people who generally tend to know what they're doing. Whereas uh, the average, let's say, millennium investor is impatient, doesn't necessarily have the skills, and doesn't really have the time to, 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 to engage with that market. So what happens mm -hmm. is people uh, end up just doing either passive investing, 
So put their money into some kind of passive fund and forget about it, but which means that they don't really take agency and they don't really know what type of actual trading they're doing. It's all black box. Um, or they do engage with the market and they end up uh, losing money and getting frustrated because they don't know what they're doing. What CoinRoot does is it helps these users to build these strategies, but it gives them also an educational and a fun experience. So someone compared us to like a Duolingo for automated trading, for example. I'm going to show you now a little bit uh, the product itself. Uh, so just one, one piece of maybe additional information. Right now, we just offer CoinRoo for digital currencies. So for anything crypto, uh, mm -hmm. but, uh, we are adding non-crypto assets as well. It's just a question of time because the, uh, the system works the same way. Uh, okay. You'll see that all in, in a minute. Um, so basically here you have a dashboard where you see your different strategies. Uh, you see how they're performing, like overall my portfolio is doing well, uh, but I have had some, uh, some less well performing strategies in the last 72 hours. Um, and then one important thing to know is we are not at, like the trades don't happen on our platform. Um, mm -hmm. Users connect us via an API key to different trading platforms and exchanges. Uh, so we plug in third-party trading platforms. We don't have custody over the user funds. Uh, all we do is we see the wallet balances and uh, we can place trades depending on what, what the user has set up. So you can see from one interface, you can see your different wallets. Um, in the future, for example, we'll be adding, uh, we'll be adding uh, like IG index and non-crypto brokers as well. So you'll be able to also see your stocks here. You'll be able to see other uh, assets that you're trading here. Um, and then the main part of the application, of course, is the root page. Uh, let's say I just want to build a paper trade. Um, I can either choose from one out of over 150 different templates. Mm -hmm. and very focused on like this educational side. So we really explain to people what's going on, why something may or may not make sense. And the users also have the ability to switch on what we call a smart guide, which guides them a little bit through, through this process. Um, let's, but let's say you want to build your own strategy. So I've selected here the demo exchange, and then I can build something, let's say, uh, if any of my coins has I can choose from simple indicators or I can also use more advanced technical indicators. So let's say if any of my coins has its price increased by 5%, uh, let's say within one hour, so it's going up quite quick, I want to take profit. So sell, uh, let's say 75% of that coin, uh, let's say to my and then, uh, but now let's say I do want to buy that coin back because I don't just want, I, I, I like my portfolio. I want to keep it that way. So let's say then wait, uh, let's say three days and then buy back that coin. So let's say buy, I can obviously have that coin back with my euro. Um, I can also change that to euro. Uh, and do it 10 times. And then here on the right, you have like a nice little guide that really gives you in English a description what the strategy would do. Take profit and buy. And then I press launch live and the strategy goes into the market. And then of course, uh, what our users end up doing a lot is looking at how the strategy is performing. People love statistics. Uh, you can see what trades happened here, uh, what condition was met, you can tweak your rule, you can edit it, etc. Mm -hmm. And if you are happy with it, obviously, uh, actually, we have uh, different pricing plans, so I'm just going to show it to you. I saw them in the, in the presentation. Oh, okay, okay, fantastic. Yeah, we have different, we have different, uh, basically, monthly plans. So you have a limited free plan, and then at some point, you you more advanced plans. And really that's, that, that's, that's how it works right now. We are gradually, of course, adding more uh, functionalities. We're improving. Like right now, there are about, there are over 8,000 people registered on Konu already. There are about of them who are actively trading. Um, so it's like, the, the, there, there is quite a bit of activity going on. 
uh, we have relatively decent monthly trading volumes. We have uh, grow like relative, still low, but relatively quickly growing ARR, so our annual revenue run rate, uh, which is great. Uh, but of course, there's a lot of things uh, we need to improve. Uh, we're trying to improve our conversion rate. We are trying, you know, like there is of course a lot of a lot of work, like a lot of work to be done, uh, like every early stage startup. And um, because you also are curious for sure in the go-to-market strategy, um, I'm just going to tell a bit more about that. So right now, the main driver uh, of our traffic is uh, our SEO. Uh, so we rank organically for a lot of uh, a lot of very targeted keywords. So for example, automated trading Binance, we are page one of Google. Uh, automated trading, let's say Kraken, we are uh, page one of Google, and so on. Like you can try different combinations of exchanges, crypto, mm -hmm. even strategies. And we rank very well for a lot of them. So that's that's kind of been our let's say growth hack that's really driven a significant amount of traffic. And because it works so well for us, uh, we're still focused a lot on adding variations of it because that just works so well for us. Like we we, we have a lot of traffic on a monthly basis. Like we have competitors who have been in the market for longer than us, but they have less visits on their landing page than us. And uh, this is all organically, or is it all already paid? Completely organic. Completely okay. Organic. We, we, we have spent zero on market. I mean, obviously we have some small subscriptions, etc. But like, let's say we're spending less than 100, 100 per month on marketing. Like we don't, okay. have, don't do any ad spend because we just don't have the, the budget just yet. Um, and it's also because we are pure, for now we are still pure crypto. It's a bit more difficult to advertise on like Google AdWords, etc. Like it's not impossible, but, but like you, you, you have to use some, some tricks. And then the other the other way how we reach users is we partner up with exchanges. So for example, Liquid is uh, one. It, it, they are part of the largest exchange of Japan. Uh, so we have like a partnership with them that just recently was announced a few weeks ago. So they mm -hmm. announced their blog and obviously like on social media. And then they do promotions to their users. Uh, they can their users can trade on CoinRoo with a discount, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So these are things that we gradually roll out. We are about to launch a partnership with Kraken Futures, which is uh, the leverage trading arm of Kraken, uh, which is one of the largest exchanges in crypto. We have partnerships with Bitpanda uh, and some of the other exchanges as well. So we, we are building that up uh, there as well. And the final way of our uh, current marketing strategy is affiliate income. Um, so that's something we recently started. But that's something obviously that, that has worked very well for a lot of companies in the cryptocurrency space. There are a lot of influencers, there are a lot of promoters. So we, we have partnered up with a couple of websites, a couple of blogs, and they've been driving some good traffic for us. So we already got our first sales through that, etc. Um, obviously, there's still like work to do. We actually just started to work with uh, like we really like to work with mentors because obviously, like you get so much out of it. Um, and these are usually people we get referred to either our network or through our current investment. So for example, we just started to work with a mentor who has the experience of building up affiliate marketing programs for some really successful startups. So we're doing like a, every two weeks, like a one hour coaching session where we just run him through what we are doing, brainstorm with him. And then in the following two weeks, we implement it. So that's kind of, we've been doing the same on like marketing. We've kind of, we, we, we like a lot to do this type of thing. It's, it's Very cool produced a lot of stuff for us yeah so that's that's like the the kind of summary of where we are yeah super nice so you're basically to sum it up the ifttt mechanism for platforms for the advanced users exactly and we like to say we're not for the advanced because a lot of our users are kind of beginner and intermediary it's like let's say you've been trading for a few months and you go to the point that you kind of know the basics, but you also know that without a bot, the market will just flush you out. And that's when you come to us. Okay, perfect. So um, from from my first glance and experience, you're, you're pretty advanced in that what you're doing in terms of go-to-market. So 
Um, this workshop today will probably deliver some, some 101s and basics, which could also help you to somehow shape in your strategy. Um, so we're not uh, starting from scratch, but we are building probably on that what you have already done. And it delivers probably some information that you can use afterwards to um, gradually improve in certain areas. Um, I'll give you a short introduction um, what we will do. So um, let me just check where my PowerPoint is. Okay, it doesn't work, so I will share my desktop. Okay, I can't share right now. Or do you see anything? Nope. Ram, are you able to help? Mm, no, I don't see anything. Maybe uh, are you using a Mac, uh, Robert? Yeah. Could it be that you need to do change the settings? Hold on. To allow Zoom. Ah, here it is. Ah, now there we go. Is it? Oh, perfect. Okay, you should see, you should see my desktop and the presentation. Yes. Okay. Perfect. So. From our point of view, brand is a story. So what we are trying to help you is to somehow build this story that you can tell everyone what you're doing. In there was my, my try of a summary, what you are doing um, to get everyone, for example, in elevator pitch, um, um, explained what is the basic stuff. So let's try to reset from all your technical information, technical background. It's now all about how to target the market. And the question is, for me, what are your object objectives in terms of what is your market? Whom do, do you would like to convince? Is it more the investor side or is it more the customer side? You're muted, Alexa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 99.9% um, .9 of the time, the customers. Uh, unfortunately, okay. I have to occasionally also convince investors. Uh, that's currently the case, so we are fundraising. Um, so in this particular time, yes, I would like to convince investors, but generally, of course, I'm building a business for customers. So I'm not quite sure how to, how to answer that, that question, you know? Okay. Um, I will help you with some questions in terms of what can be your specific goals in terms of um, what would you like to achieve on both sides? So what are these specific objectives? Are they somehow measurable? What are your next steps in business development? And what do you need to achieve until when? Is there a certain, I think you, you just formulated a lot of stuff in your paper, in your introduction paper. And I would like to do it a little bit more interactive. So let's go on our um, shared board. I can send you this link that you have also access to sure. it and we can work on it together. So you should now have access yeah. to the board. Because if you start every strategy, you should be clear of your objectives. So does it work? Uh, it works, just to, give me one second, I'm just logging in. Can you, can you see me on the board? I just saw a guest right now. Yeah, one second, it's just starting to, to give me some, some nonsense here. Okay, yeah, I think yeah. I'm a guest that should work as well. So I will help you somehow, um, so we can use these little papers and sticky notes to uh, formulate our different objectives. So talking about investors, as you would like to fundraise, what are your specific objectives towards the investors? Um, I need to raise, or let's say we are raising currently a 300K GBP round. That's basically the goal. Um, so I need to raise that, let's say by uh, July, end of July this year. Okay, 
Um, to do so, are there un any other specific goals towards the investors in terms of, I don't know, getting a base of certain people, certain awareness within that group? I mean, one way of thinking about it is it's also a numbers game. Like we've spoken to a lot of VCs, we've, we're speaking to a lot of angels. Like I, I, I can literally see the conversion rate. Like if I reach out on LinkedIn to let's say 50 people, I get scheduled three, four calls out of it. Mm -hmm. There is a number of how many people I need to, re I, I need to reach out really to like, let's say uh, 500, 500 potential NGO investors uh to to increase my chance of the conversion of one of the investors i mean th these are not like precise numbers but you you get the yeah you get the absolutely um are you really building on that in terms of do you do some um recurrent um measures on linkedin for example to reach out to these people or are you promoting some content on linkedin or stuff so I do a, like a couple of these things. So we have profiles as going well, we have profiles on a number of the like various angel networks. So we are on an angel investment network. So what I do is I find the angels there, then I find them on LinkedIn and then I contact them on LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I do that with a couple of websites. There are a couple of directories of angels that I have access to. Um, so that's basically the, the main channel. I have like spreadsheets and spreadsheets of angel investors. Okay, very good. Um, let's focus a little bit on the right side, talking about the customers. What are your objectives there? Um, I want to double our conversion rate. Like that's quite ambitious. Like that's going to probably take like a while. Um, that's one thing. I want to reach, let's say a, a certain revenue let's say i want to reach 10000 usd monthly recurring uh, revenue so mrr oh yeah recurring revenue yeah monthly right yeah um anything else I want the users to stay like I, I want, let's say, uh, I want the average user to stay at least six months with CoinRoom for, for, to start with. Like, uh, let's say, uh, like, churn less than one sixth of the users per month, basically, or six months, at least minimum usage of CoinRoom six months. Mm -hmm. And then the reason I picked specifically six months is because I know that a lot of like fintech products specifically struggle to get over the six month threshold. That's kind of yeah. the make or break. So if uh, we get to that point and beyond, we know we are we are doing. Uh, okay. Work. I think you also have specific goals towards the number of customers, right? Yes, we do. Um, let's say I want to have. Let me think. I don't have the exact number in my head, let's say by the end of the year, but let's say I want to get by by the end of next month, so that's half year, I want to have consistently 3,000 active users. Oh, um, Oleg, just... Sorry, yeah? Just a question. Uh, the doubling the conversion rate and 10K MRR, are those related? Do they you... are for sure. But I mean, obviously like, let's say at the current conversion rate, we would need a higher number of users to get to that, to that revenue rate. Whereas if we double the conversion rate, we could stay at the current growth rate and we would get there uh, much faster. It's kind of like two sides of the same coin in a way. And do you, do you have a timeline for the 10K MRR? Uh, end of this year. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. I actually think we can hit we can hit it earlier even, but you never know with these things. There's it's like uh, I think early stage startup. You have like one month where everything is shooting through the roof. Then one month where things slow down a bit. Then it goes up. It's kind of before you reach really like this takeoff trajectory. You get like these little bumps in the road. So as you can see, I'm, I'm somehow prepared. <laughs> so this is a screenshot of your pitch deck. 
Um, are these numbers accurate so far or are they somehow tweaked or changed, altered? Um, it's mostly accurate. I mean, uh, I would say that the strategies created per month, that's live strategies. So that's mm -hmm. the total number of strategies if you include also the paper trading actually much higher. Uh, the revenue now, even already for this month, we already crossed this number. So okay, we've cool. done quite well on that. Um, in terms of users signed up, we actually, we've crossed the 8,000 users. Okay. We've got more than that in terms of paying recurring users. So you know, in a way, like the good news with this slide of the deck is that it's very quickly outdated. Uh, very good. The good news. Okay, cool. But we can orient on, on these numbers at the end of the day because for the organic growth in terms of numbers, um, meaning revenue and all that stuff, you need a certain numbers of users. So your first aim should be to get more users at the end of the day. Yeah, 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 of course. So th there's different, um, just one one quick thing. I'm mildly uh, careful what I'm sharing because we're obviously live. So I'm just a bit like- uh, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but uh, do, 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 do what am I saying? Uh, yeah, there's the, always the question, what part of the funnel do we focus on? The acquisition side, the conversion, the activation and the retention. And the, we are kind of currently trying to improve on all these lines because there's yeah. a lot of work to do on, on, on each of them. Okay, very good. Um, so we have a certain understanding and from my point of view, we should probably focus on the customer side today um, mm -hmm. to see how you can reach out to the customers because I think these are crucial at the end of the day also to um, approach to your investors because if the number of users is even larger than today, you have better chances to convince your investors. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like we, we spoke to a lot of VCs, like very good VCs as well. And we have one VC who told us when you get to 10K uh, MRR, we'll, find, we'll give you 1 million USD basically. Okay. Um, so we, we, we literally have, like we, we, we have a list of VCs and what they said we should get back to them with in terms of monthly recurring revenue. Um, so th th that's actually pretty good because we, we, you know, we kind of know where we need to get to. So the one objective um, is reliant on the other, which is important. Very much so. There was actually one very interesting article, which I think I picked that up from one of our discussions on at Accelerator Frankfurt. But, um, Something about, yeah, how fast software as a service companies hit ARR milestones. Uh, let me share, share that here in the, in the chat. Maybe you'll find it interesting. But mm -hmm. it's actually really accurate. Like we are kind, we are, we are like quite on that trajectory. Um, I shared it with Ram because I don't think I can share it with you. No, I can't actually. Yeah. Hold on, I'll try to see. Very interesting. Uh, because then like, if you actually look at those numbers, like we are really quite on that on that road. Like it took us quite a while to get to ten thousand or ARR, but from ten thousand to thirty thousand ARR, it took us quite quick actually. So like okay. you see, you can see how that journey is progressing. All right, cool. So. Um... What we are trying to, to achieve is a certain right intersection. So you have different offers, you have different solutions, you have certain contents, and these somehow need to um, develop a certain relevance and resonance within your target group, meaning today the customer or your potential customer um, meeting the certain needs and the certain desires, but also interests of this target group. And the magic question is, how can we achieve that? And to do so, the first point is to better understand your customer. And referring to your presentation, your pitch presentation, you're pretty much focusing on the millennial customer. Yeah. So if I'm um, going back to the slide deck and I just quickly screenshotted it, this is your somehow prototype of the user, the millennial. It really is, yeah. Also, like kind of you see here what this guy works for Active Campaign, uh, it's a tech company. Uh, so like a lot of our users come from the slightly techy, but also like fintech, tech, finance type of background. Okay. Um, did you have the chance um, to somehow prepare persona sheets for these different persons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, we have personas uh, 
we use actually we use that a lot also on the product in the product process because we use agile we use we have like a gitlab process where we get the user needs we do a lot of user interviews we get a lot of user research perfect through user requests in our chat uh people write to us like literally every day like four five six people um but also we do like 30 45 minute user research interviews um, mm -hmm. and based on that we have personas but also based on that we formulate user needs and then out of that we solutionize and then create basically product priorities. Um, it, it, like, I know this is the ideal case. In reality, like, sometimes it's not like, you know, the process sometimes is different because we are a small team. And, you, know, you have to be flexible. But generally, like, this is kind of the, uh, the goalpost we set ourselves uh, in our process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the personas help you to better um, empathize with your different target groups. Yeah. Um, how many different persona um, sheets do you have? We currently have three. Um, it's also one like one interesting thing is that the founders we ourselves are really like our target users. Okay. Like we, started, we started with Coin Rule because my co-founder wanted to build a trading strategy and realized he can't. Was no easy way. Mm -hmm. So we are kind of all these like millennial techie, tech workers, finance background types interested in cryptocurrencies, investing, trading. So like we are really like our own, uh, our own target users. Okay, then let's probably summarize a little bit these target groups. And I would like to invite you to write these stickers right now um, to better to get a better understanding of your target groups of these three different types. Just to make it like to, it. it's going to let me. Uh, you should can add it here. Is the sticky note? Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm able. Fantastic. Um, so uh, what shall we? So what should I put up here? Just the the type of user. So like uh, millennial, young, young. Like like this, you mean? Yeah, that's perfect. So this is one type of persona. What are the different two others? We have, uh, oh yeah, okay, I'm gonna. Uh, we do have some B2B uh, element because actually it's funny now because literally this morning I was talking to a fund, crypto fund who wants actually to trade quite Good amounts with us. Uh, they just need one specific feature for us to have for that. Uh, what did I say? Tech worker finance profession. As a user and not as a corporate um, target person. Yes, exa exactly. As like, okay. like a B2B site. So like a fine. Okay. Would that go here then on the corporate? Um, yeah, probably okay. if we understand corporate not as the investor side, but more on the B2B oh, side. Oh, I see. I see. Up to you. I mean, we can leave this blank for now. Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. So um, probably you can write down for the profile section for the first, the millennium young professional, some short adjectives. What is this kind of person like? of our users are different years. It's a bad word, let's say more control. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of our users, like they're not satisfied with just putting money aside and forgetting about it. Like they used okay. to have kind of agency over things. But then also need then a little bit to somehow be financial literate. You know, a lot of them, they want to be more, but they not necessarily are, which is why okay. they you know, site, let's say, want to be more financially. 
but also some of them have like want to like a lot of them you can almost split it up. We have users, they come and they have like a really specific idea of a strategy that they want to implement. And then we have those who kind of more generically want to make money trading, but they don't necessarily know where to start. Mm -hmm. Want to implement slash test specific, which is, for example, why uh, a lot of our features around testing strategies are actually so important. So like the demo exchange or uh, the, 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 we are introducing a back testing functionality, which will mm -hmm. test their strategies on historical data. Um, and people are like really, really, really keen on that. Like we get a lot of requests. Okay. Um, what about the financial situation? Uh, shall I put this also into description? Yeah, that's fine. We can sort them afterwards, so no, no worries about that. Okay. Yeah, usually, I mean, we, we get a range because uh, we have quite a few, like we have some users who've been, let's say, trading crypto for a while. So they, they are, they, they have quite a bit of crypto. They don't necessarily have much fiat, but they have a lot of crypto. But we have also a lot of like normal people. So like, young professionals looking to invest, let's say, 5K, you know, something like that. Um, actually, it's interesting because we have, you, you can really like a lot of these things, like you can so nicely see in the data. Um, we have uh, power users who trade 100, 200K per month, uh, but the average amount per active user traded is actually much lower than that. Yeah. It's clo more close to this number that I'm putting down here. Um, and and this, this is also what we used to set, for example, uh, thresholds for the plans, because we know where where kind of the, the sweet spots are in terms of what people are looking to, to trade. What about the, the risk awareness? Are they very risk aware, very secure, or are there more on the um let's check something outside and try something new um good question we get like i was surprised by how many users we get who use us specifically for risk avoidance um like i've actually personally i've been experimenting with market making strategies which are much more advanced we don't yet offer that on coin rule but then i used mm -hmm. to protect myself from the risk of my other strategies um, so you, 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 you can see that CoinRo is definitely already really good for that. Um, interested in risk mitigation. Just kind of like, it, it's something also we teach them. Like trading is all about having the right risk, risk strategy in place. Um, if you're not calculating your risk reward ratios, you're not a trader, you're a gambler. Mm -hmm. And that's something we're really, this is kind of part of this educational side. Like we really try to get that to people's heads. Um, I would say about 50% of them understand that instinctively and about 50% of them have like no understanding of risk. Mm -hmm. So let me say about 50%. The question would be, would you like also to attract these gambler people to be more risk aware or are you focusing on, on the more um, yeah, let's say conservative literate user. That's a really good question, honestly. Um, for now, we have like, to be perfectly honest with you, for now, we haven't really been like making, like the distinction has not been driving our strategy. For now. Let me put it this way. Um, mm -hmm. If those who take higher risks end up losing money, I believe we are going to lose them eventually as customers. So I would prefer our users to become better traders over time, because I think that will eventually make sure they stick around for longer. Okay, so probably you take one of the red notes and just put that question there, gamblers versus literate people, to leave it later as a, a question that you can take with you, um, because everything like that is, um, an impulse for a story at the end of the day. It's a certain content piece. You can approach these people in a different way. Where do I put this? 
uh, you can put it uh, to the side uh, on the description like gamblers versus literate people. And put it next to description. No, it's an interesting point because if you look at all those online trading sites, the majority of people on them actually loses money. Um, but people obviously still keep coming back. So there are a lot of, there are clearly a lot of gamblers out there. But like, it, it's not something like we approach that from a very ethical point of view. Like, I don't want to build something where people just come to lose money. Um, now, of course, trading is hard and people overestimate themselves. So it's kind of yeah. what tends to happen is if we can, let's say, somewhere where like eToro, I think if you look at their small print, it says that over 70% of the users lose money. Um, if we can get that 70% down to, I don't know, 58%, I think we've actually added value to the market because yeah. we moved on that. But it's kind of a fine line there. So it's not an easy question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you have any specific information about if people want to invest one time, like I have 5K on, on the site I'd like to invest versus I have to I have some something like 100 euro per month and I want to constantly invest that money. Also, a good question. It's a bit of both. So, for example, I have one strategy. I send every month. I send 100 euro to my Coinbase Pro account, and every month with those 100 euro, I buy I buy Ethereum mm -hmm. and through Coin Rule. But most of my strategies are more active than that because I I want to catch upsides minimize my risk, but I also want to accumulate certain coins that I like. So these are like the three kind of most common goals of our users. Okay. Um, any so information? I'm yeah, you should probably write it down here just to document it because I think it's important also on the term of what is the um, money that people have um, in terms of what can they invest per month, for example. Mm -hmm. um, should I put this under motivation? Yeah, that's good. So uh, regular, let's see, regular accumulation output, uh, output protect my downside. So this is something we are also quite, quite happy with. I think we shared that previously here, but when the markets crashed in March, over 60% of our users actually came out uh, having made money because the rules protected them. Okay. You know, type of stop loss, some type of uh, strategy to protect their portfolio, and it just like continued to try to trigger until it actually managed to trigger. Users came out of it in a much better place than people who just trade manually. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Great. Opportunities. At the same time, you know, when like Bitcoin goes up to over ten thousand USD, I don't want to sit in front of my computer all day long waiting for it, but I want Coinroot to catch that for me. And that's basically what, you know, what, what drives yeah. a lot of our users. Um, before we um, go on on the motivation, I just want to share with you a short research that I did before, which is here. Um, it's a German spreadsheet. It's from the Federal Statistics Bureau. And I was curious about how much money do people have in that segment of 25 to 35? What can they spend on um, increasing their their wealth, and actually it's six hundred seventy eight euros per month, mm -hmm. which is fairly interesting. So it's accumulated at the end of the day. So it's also from a larger, bigger amounts, but six hundred euros is a lot of money at the end of the day if you see it. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, also the question. This is also motivation question. Is what is the impact of the six hundred euros? How risk averse are people to invest it? Is it more that I spend 500 euros in insurances like a life insurance to make everything safe or a pension or something like that? And I spend 100 euro just to have some fun and to be more on the risk side with uh, coins and crypto. Um, what is that the motivational point? From what I can see, people have a certain like idea in their mind of how much crypto they want to hold. So let's say like not a completely random number because right, like that is what I'm seeing. Most of our users, they will have between uh, five and 20,000 USD in crypto. They don't necessarily then add new money into it. 
they reach that point and they're relatively okay with their portfolio. So what they then do is, okay, now I have this five to 20,000 USD in crypto. Now I want to make something with it. And that's when they come to us. Okay. Money they already have. So let's say th th that number of 600, I presume that's Euro. So le let's say uh, if over one year you put every month 50% or 25% of that into crypto, then whatever you have at the end of the year, uh, you just have it sitting there. And you think, huh, what if I use it a bit more actively? And that's really our users. But the user must be yeah. already um, into crypto. So you don't want to approach people who are not literate within crypto or more on the conservative investment side. So we, as we are adding non-crypto assets, we will also start approaching more of the kind of tra more traditional investors because you will be able to use Coinro to accumulate, I don't know, tech stocks or uh, an ETF like uh, whatever, uh, FTSE 500 ETF. If you mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the kind of the, 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 the appeal to users will broaden because we'll be able to offer a wider range of just strategies really. Um, okay, what does that mean motivation-wise for this kind of people? So probably you should note that down. Is it more uh, more opportunities in terms of revenues? Is it uh, an alternative investment approach? It's definitely more opportunities in terms of in terms of profit investment. Um, that's like a lot of our users are specifically there to to make money like if mm -hmm. doesn't make the money they think that something is not working um that's one thing right now can, oh. let's say we have like i don't think conservative users right now come to us that much mm -hmm. because uh it's just like if you're conservative, you just put your money somewhere and you won't really move it too much. Yeah. What about that control aspect? Control in the sense that like in crypto markets are open 24 seven. Um, and you can't really, if you're sleeping, you can't close an open position, but coin can, open, uh, can close an open position for you. Uh, so it's kind of like being control, even if you can't be in control. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about these people who are going to a bank clerk telling them, hey, listen, I have 5K, I'd like to invest something. And they will explain them, okay, give me all your money and I send you a monthly report about what is going on, how I invested that money. Uh, so kind of like a, almost like a fund, basically. Yeah, we, we don't, like, we don't, we get asked that sometimes people are like, hey, if I give you X amount of money, how much can you give me back? But, no, but you don't want to attract these people. You want to attract the, the opposite of these people in terms of, I don't want the bank clerk to do the job. I want to do the job by myself. I want to have full yeah. control. That's the aspect of motivation. It's, exactly. Yes, exactly. And we are kind of the, the, the trusted friend in that relation because yeah. they, write us, they write to us in the chat. They come into our Telegram community. Like We develop trust with them, so they believe us. And yeah them really to make the most of of using coin rule okay so these are all the triggers that you can use um, if you're thinking about how to approach these people what are the emotional triggers for them and how can you get the certain resonance and relevance for the people that they listen to you also to attract more people that are probably not right now in your channels or they didn't know you yet or something like that or haven't heard anything about crypto, but also looking for some alternatives in terms of how can I invest some money? So you are opening your target groups at the end of the day and probably attract some more people for, um, uh, for your solution. Um, do, do you think at this point we should broaden our target group or should we make it even more narrow? The question is, what is your objective? And um, at the end of the day, I, for, I, I understand that you would like to broaden your user base and your user community. So mm -hmm. your user community right now is somehow naturally limited to those people who are already familiar with crypto. Yeah, 
but one thing I always have in mind on that, and, and yeah, yeah you, you, you're, you're right, but at this point, one thing I do have in mind always is how the advice generally is to be like ultra niche, ultra specific, dominate your niche, and then expand into other verticals. Um, mm -hmm. One thing that sometimes is, is on, on my mind. Now, I think when we, if we broaden the assets that we offer, we don't really, like the niche is still this millennial investor, young professional, tech worker, finance professional. So I still think we are kind of appealing to, to the same people we were appealing before. Because just like they trade crypto, they also trade, you know, Tesla stock or Apple stock. So I, I think we just make the product more powerful without really changing the niche. But I, I'm, I'm always a bit like, like, I'm not sure how to think about that part. Yeah, I think it's it's totally fine to be in that niche and also to target these niche people who are already familiar with different crypto information and crypto tools and how to invest this money. Um, but they are targeted from various sides right now. So you have some other people in your startup uh, environment and in the accelerator and they all want to attract these people. So you have a, a natural base of limited persons who are bombarded with certain information. The question is, how can you scale on, on a larger base? And probably it's more these people who are financially literate, who are, have a certain educational background, who can understand what crypto is, but haven't had the opportunity or the interest or didn't want to go over a certain hurdle to invest these things. Now, what is something that you can deliver? You can mitigate risks. You can give them full access and control. And this is probably a good reason for someone who didn't do the last step um, to now start with it. Just as, a, as an idea, you know? Yeah, that's a good point. I, I, I like that way of thinking. So it's like basically like the touch points is that the user wants to do it, but is worried. And we just are there to help them mitigate the risks of trying it out. Yeah, you're, you're giving the access to the last mile. Good way of putting it. You know, it's, it's kind of, it's not something I, I like to kind of think too much through sometimes. But a lot of like, really like, why do I invest? Why do I trade? Like the ideal case scenario would be to have some kind of extra income, let's say on a relatively regular basis without having to spend basically, you know, hours and hours and hours of work uh, forever. Like it's okay, to spend, you know, X amount of work upfront, but then you don't want to have to consistently do it. Now, because trading is hard, it's not really something you can do passively. Coin rule is on that last mile, the help for you to make it a bit less, uh, let's say, uh, a bit more passive, basically. It helps you to, 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 to have to spend less time on the trading while ideally still being able to make relatively regular extra income. Yeah, but now think of the people, um, how much time they already have invested to get familiar with crypto. How does it work? What are the basic fundamental things behind it? What is the mechanism stuff and all that things? And you don't want to educate people up front in terms of these people have absolutely no idea about it. You don't want to educate them because this is a lot of effort. So you already narrowed your base of people that you would like to approach to these ones who are somehow educated, somehow literate, somehow familiar with the term of crypto and how does it work in basic? And now you give them more control and more yeah, motivation to try it because they have a certain control and risk tool and access work. You, you're right, it definitely some crypto, at this point, some crypto exposure is, yeah. that's definitely part of our user. Because uh, if you have literally never bought any crypto, like you don't come to us because you need to start with Coinbase, you need to start somewhere else. Yeah. And then when you start to actually do something with it, that's when you come to. Yeah. So I, I'm always trying to do some explanatory um, things. So imagine a guy who started to drive a car and got the license to drive the car. What is your role? Are you the guy who gives the insurance? Probably no. Probably you are the safety 
uh, training or something like that for the newly guy who is driving the car or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are the autopilot. We are like, you know, in the Tesla, you have that autopilot function. Yeah, yeah. And these are some symbols and, and pictures you can work with if somebody's asking you, what are you actually doing? Right. And before you start to explain all the technical background and stuff, give them a picture. Yeah, we are the Tesla autopilot for investing. I love the autopilot uh, analogy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's what I use CoinRoll for. Yeah, yeah, super. You know, actually, Robert Ram is one of our users. Yeah, I just, I just heard it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. very good. Um, what we wanted to, to offer with the touch point question is where are you engaged already in terms of channels and stuff? You mentioned Telegram. Um, you mean channels in terms of acquisition or channels in terms of where we talk to our existing users? The one and the other. Uh, shall I put these three, by the way, shall I put them somewhere else? Or shall I yeah, them? put them aside. That's totally fine. No, this, my German side of me wants everything to be in order. <laughs> That's very good. <laughs> uh, okay. So, touch points. Um, well, SEO. So, basically, people Google us. Google, um, that's one. So people search for things like automated trading and they find yeah. it, uh, which is good because that's obviously very targeted. Someone said- Yeah, totally fine. Trading. Yeah, it's great. Um, then partners, exchanges, okay. That's currently, that's the current, like let's say channels, acquisition channel. Affiliates and that's, that's blogs, uh, influencers, influencers, uh, articles. Where do you post these articles? Um, so that's actually what where our influence, our uh, affiliates post them. So let's say we have a partnership with like some crypto publication, and then mm -hmm. they do like a review of Coin Rule, and uh, that will be the article that then also contains. Okay. So you probably have a website, I suppose. Uh, you mean as coin rule? Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. yeah. We have a specific website also for the affiliates, which kind of they can sign up. They okay. Can, yeah. Um, and then uh, talk, talk, chat. That's the chat through which they talk to us uh, within the app. Mm -hmm. You can add the website because it's a fundamental <laughs> touch point. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, we have a lot of websites because that's how we rank so well. We have a lot of landing pages which are targeted for specific uh, use cases. So we have a landing page for Binance automated trading. We have landing, you know, like we- Yeah. So you can just probably add website and landing pages. Uh, we have- a Growing Telegram community. Telegram community. Uh, and then we have like email, basically. That's quite actually an important channel. Email in terms of you are reachable by email or you send emails via newsletter? Both. Uh, okay. Newsletter support. Um, so through that, we also offer users to do like an onboarding call with our head of trading. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to write this down like uh, onboarding demo call. What is interesting is that, for example, for me, when I start using a new product, I love onboarding calls. Yeah, it's um, super. Actually, surprisingly few users take advantage of that. Those who do love it, but a lot of users don't. Not that they don't, like everyone who does it loves it, but just a lot of users are not keen to do it. And I'm actually quite surprised about that. And I think part of that could be a language gap 
because we're getting also a lot of users. It's usually the Americans, for example, who do an onboarding call, but it's mm -hmm. not necessarily like, I don't know, the Southern Europeans, or we have, for example, German users who only speak German, um, which is interesting, right? You would, you would think that this user group we have up here all speak English, um, yeah. but not, necess not necessarily, actually. But, so if we stick to our picture of the Tesla user, there are two ways of approaching the new Tesla that is standing in your garage. First mm -hmm. thing is that you uh, ask the salesman that he give a short introduction. The other way is let me try it. I do it on my own. So this is more probably a psychological topic. Mm -hmm. I, think so. I think so. I think so. Um, then another touch point. I mean, we have our in-app onboarding and tutorials. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm using uh, a different laptop with a German. <laughs> no problem. I forgot how it works. So, in app uh, onboarding. Then we have a bl our own block and our own help center. It's a lot of touch points, actually. Yeah. Um, Where would these financial professional um, approach you? Why are what kind of touch points? I think mostly via the in-app chat, via, via this one here. I think that's one, one actually of the major, major points because what we find is that the users who write to us in the chat are the users who are the most engaged, are the users who end up buying a plan, for example. Okay, but probably they need to somehow get aware of you before before they uh, contact you via chat. How do they get aware of you? So they find us through one of these three channels here. Okay. Let's say like I will. Can I make this bigger? Uh, yep. Da draußen geht immer noch nicht so viel. Just click on it and. No, it's not that big. Anyway, um. You can just point it and then drag it anyway um but th this really is like kind of the the number one the most important yeah. yeah the most important so they find us like let's say through the internet because they were looking for something like us uh which is great because that's quite targeted and then they start to engage so we have one thing for example we do if someone spends a certain amount of time in the application itself the chat automatically opens up and there's a message, hi, I'm like Ruben, head of trading of CoinRu. If you have any questions, you know, just yep. pay here. So because we realize that people are quite responsive to that, we offer them that additional uh, trust element okay. and advantage of that. Is there a specific landing page for the financial professional? No, there isn't actually, there isn't. But that's because most people find us directly through like uh, like they find us other ways basically like uh, just as an as an idea because financial professionals definitely use different language compared to the normal user so you can think of might it be interesting to attract more of these financial professionals by creating an own landing page with specific language set that's a good idea. Um, for example, we could have one that's kind of more generic about investing rather than just crypto specific. So it could be like, you know, trade any asset automatic, you know, something like that. But All the different topics and hurdles and problems that these B2B professionals have. What is missing in their tool set if they are thinking about professional trading or whatsoever, what their concern is and how can you help them with it? And then you can make it specific towards this target group on this landing page and also right. offer B2B support. Yeah, we don't yet have like a B2B specific uh, landing page, that's for sure. Cool. Okay, let's leave it with this. So mm -hmm. you, we, we will share this um, with you also the, uh, the PowerPoint that you can also elaborate on it afterwards. This is just the first one-on-one -on -one for that. 
Um, let's go over to the next one, which is reasoning. So if you're thinking about your different target groups, um, what is the reasoning to use your solution um, in terms of what are the real barriers and hurdles and anxieties when it comes to use your uh, solution? Yeah, that's, that's a good point. Um, so barriers, hurdles, anxieties, will it work? I mean, that, mm -hmm. that's the number one thing, right? If you put somewhere your money, you want to be able to trust it. Uh, this is why, for example, we are working so hard on improving the stability of the system because yeah. if they see something not working, they freak out. Um, yeah. yeah. Do, do I understand what it does? Uh, can I make money with it? I mean, at the end of the day, we don't have withdrawal rights, so we cannot move users' funds outside of the exchange. But mm -hmm. they don't necessarily like completely understand that, right? And you, you know what I mean? It's also crypto. So crypto is a place where everyone tells you be ultra careful. So people are ultra careful. So in case something happens to the platform in terms of losing the money and all that stuff, whom would they point to? It would be probably you as a first contact, right? So no, it would actually be the exchange and where their money sits. So if they use Coinbase or Binance, we are like a layer on top of it. So yeah, absolutely, from a te technical point of view. But from the perception of the user, if something happens and they don't get it right now, that it's more the problem of the platform, would they approach the platform first or would they approach you first? So it depends what's not working. Um, okay. They approach us, like if they they still have to like upload their balance directly on the exchange for example. Let's say they upload their balance on the exchange, then they come to CoinRule and for whatever reason, they don't see their balance. That's when they get uh, upset with us. Um, but at the same time, if there is something that happens on the exchange side, let's say the exchange is down, um, they might come to us, but then obviously like when they know that the exchange is down, they understand that's not like on our side. Mm, okay. And it, it depends a little bit because those who are who are somewhat more familiar with crypto, they understand the dynamic. Um, but it's usually the people who are kind of more beginners who kind of freak out and they come to us because it's more easy to reach us than like some generic support yeah. of exchange that never responds. Okay. Then you've mentioned language. Probably this is also yeah. a hurdle. Very good point. Yes, we do get that actually. Yeah. One of them. You should, you should make it in Japanese, guys. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. We got actually. It was funny. We got like two weeks ago. We had. Well, one thing I always say is that I almost I I measure how much users need our product by how upset they get if something doesn't work. So I, I'm very happy our users when something doesn't work instead of just leaving, they come and they like shout at us in the chat and they get really angry. So we had our first users swear at us in Korean. Uh, like two weeks ago. <laughs> and I thought that was a great thing, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah, yeah, definitely. We, 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 we absolutely need more languages. Like we're talking for partnerships to exchanges in places like Indonesia, Brazil, etc. We have users in places like Russia, Turkey, etc. But we don't have, uh, also we have a lot of paying users in places like Italy, Spain, Germany. We're also... Mm -hmm that people speak you know great English they might speak English but they might not necessarily know the trading specific you know English and things like yes that. so have different maturity level of users uh, what do you mean like specific to the language or in general no in general in, in terms of crypto yeah oh yeah yeah absolutely we have people they don't know anything like we, we have people they know very little and we have people who are quite sophisticated yeah so it's a it's definitely a barrier because you have to somehow educate the ones or you shouldn't make it too stupid for the um pro people 
So one thing that we do is when a user signs up, we ask them, we have an onboarding questionnaire. We ask them oh, what level of ex expertise they have. And what we found is like, it, it's interesting, like uh, beginners and intermediates make up about 70%. Uh, and then the people who are really experienced, let's say, make up around 30%. And we right now, we convert the most, the people in the middle. We don't really convert the most advanced because they want like really advanced features we don't yet have. And we don't convert the absolute beginners because they just don't understand it. Whereas the intermediate is the sweet spot right now. Um, okay. I think how to make the, the experience, the UX more uh specific for the individual level of experience of the user the question would be how do you ask that question are you asking for the experience level in terms of beginner intermediate pro or is it more specifically uh it's pretty much that like we ask them uh like how, how this like how much trading experience they have and then it's like uh, a little intermediate significant some, some okay um how would banks do that Good question. I think they have much more detailed questions. Right. Like I went so, through, I think, was it Wealthfront, one of those? It's like really, really detailed. Yeah. So if, you, if you're doing this KYC process or if you want to start and uh, invest money at the bank, you have a certain risk assessment. And you yeah, can yeah. think about to use the same uh, thing in terms of, you can ask some more questions like what kind of crypto did you use before do you have crypto what kind of crypto have you since when um how much did you invest it since a specific time to make it a little bit more concrete which helps you to better profile your user which delivers data to you mm -hmm. yeah we always there's always the trade-off between you know taking too much of their time and kind of delaying the the moment of happiness when they actually touch the application. So it's getting more information so we can make it kind of more. I'm totally with you, but you don't need to do this KYC type upfront in terms of in the first interaction, but you can send an email afterwards. To better understand you, dear customer, we would like to ask you some questions which are important to deliver mm -hmm. some more information to you mm -hmm. and to offer you specific services and all that stuff. And people are willing to fill that out because they feel appreciated that you are caring about them. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah, and there are certain forms in banks and there's a standardized process, as far as I know, within European banks. So you have to do that, um, I don't know, you, you're up to five E or something like that if you're very experienced in options and stocks and all that stuff and this might be a formula that you can use to um, get better insights into your users i think that's a good idea yeah yeah for sure i mean it's definitely something we always wanted to get to that point but like it's not something we've done just yet basically yeah, yeah sure and it's pretty easy just to to write an email and store the data within a database we can use type form we already use type form we have like yeah. Questionnaires, for example, if a user cancels a plan, he gets an exit questionnaire. Yeah, and if you think a little bit ahead, it's a first step towards a customer relationship management tool where you can have a certain access to better information about your users and then you can target them more specifically. So you have content for the advanced persons, you have content for the intermediate or for the level beginners and all that stuff, and you can see how do they interact based on your information. Mm -hmm. So it's all more groundwork and homework to better target these different types of persons, not only on their professional background, but also on their experience background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's that's for, for sure something that will be very important for us. Okay. And looking to the right side, um, offering your solution what are the advantage and what kind of needs and desires do we meet um, for the people? Okay, so the needs, uh, like more easy way to trade. Yeah. To so it's convenience. Um, but 
that's one thing. But the other thing is you can't really like anyone I know who has tried to invest or trade in crypto without something like Coinro, like it's basically impossible. I mean, you, like you, you, you can't really trade without us. <laughs> basically, like that, that, that sounds pretentious, but- Okay, try to, try to formulate it positively. So it's, you are the enabler of treatment. Enabler of successful trading. Trade, yeah. Um, needs, advantages, benefits. Uh, we talked about control. Yeah, that was going to come. Control my portfolio. Then one part is also become better slash learn about trading. Like we give a lot of content about that, like in our blog, in our help center, in, in just in every way, shape or form. We want to do mm -hmm. that. Again, it's, it's just a question of priorities and limit. Um, but that's definitely something like our users actually read the things we, we write, like they are interested. Um, and then discover strategies. So like they share a lot in the community. Discover strategies. They use our template strategies. Um, discover, one second, discover good strategies. So we talked about the alternative way of investing money. Yeah, I mean, one way, for example, if I wanted to do it more passively, let's say, and it's still obviously in crypto, like I believe in Bitcoin, I believe in Ethereum. I don't really have the time or energy to do my homework on any other coins. Mm -hmm. I put 5,000 USD in Bitcoin, 5,000 USD in Ethereum and set it there and forget about it. Now, th that's fine for a lot of people and probably like, you know, that that's not a bad approach in a way, but like, in this journey of the next, whatever, three, five years, there'll be massive market movements. The price of Ethereum will go up 100, 200%, but it will probably also drop 70, 60, 70, 80%. Now, I can just forget about it, set it aside and just check it again in five years, or I, I can try to make the most out of those price movements. And for me, it's kind of almost a shame not to try to make the most of those price movements, if you have something like CoinRo helping you do that. Okay. I'm just trying to, to sum it up to make it more, more relevant to or resonating for the people. So there's this aspect of access, there's this aspect of control, and there's this aspect of success. And probably these are the, the three points that are very important when it comes to crypto trading. So X, even like I would say to any kind of trade. So yeah. I, like we've had actually quite a few users ask us specifically also about using Coinro for like stocks, for example. So actually yeah. control success. I like this. Um, probably looking back to, to the negative side of it, what about the price model that you have? What are your experiences with that? Are there any barriers in terms of price? I mean, some users would say it's a bit pricey. Like the one barrier is that if you are just trading a relatively small amount, then unless you are making enough per month to cover the monthly fee, it doesn't really make much sense for you, right? Yeah. Um, that was my first impression when I checked the prices. So. I was thinking of, um, well, you need to, to, to invest a lot of money that you get access to it. So 30 euros are probably three Netflix accesses. And this is probably a formula that how people think, what can I afford? And if you are looking to subscription fees to other possibilities, like, I, for example, Spotify, Netflix, they all have a psychological barrier. And this is around 10, 12, maximum 15 euro. And now you can think of what makes sense in terms of how does this price feel? Is it too pricey? And probably 30 euros per, or $30 per month is a lot of money that I wouldn't invest if I don't feel a direct positive effect. 
that's something different. We're, we're thinking about that a lot. We actually had lower pricing in the past. Um, an interesting thing we found is obviously, like for example, if you trade on something like Binance, the trading fees you pay actually pretty high. Just you don't feel it because, of course, it's a percentage of your total trading volume. Mm -hmm. and you draw it from your funds. So you end up paying on a like, let's say if you trade 5,000 USD per month, uh, you, you'll be paying, let's say, 0.1% in fees. Um, you know, that, 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 that's not like a small amount. We have users come to us who trade 100K, and if they go anywhere else but CoinRu, they'll be paying literally like over 1,000 USD. So in a way, we are currently good for anyone who's trading higher volumes because we have a fixed pricing. We're mm -hmm. letting people who trade, if you're trading, let's say, 1,000 USD per month, to be honest, you'll probably just use our free plan and you'll be fine with that. And yeah. that's too, you know, that's okay. We, we don't have a problem with that. So it's kind of the question for us is, is there a sweet spot between someone who trades, I don't know, uh, five and 15K where we could charge, uh, I don't know, 14, 99 or whatever, or shall we just focus on people who trade, you know, let's say over 10K and then charge them slightly higher amounts? I can't, answer you. I can't answer you that question. Yeah. I just wanted to make you aware of it, that there are some psychological hurdles in terms of price. And if you are in that different target groups, they have a certain feeling about what is the my psychological barrier. What am I able to invest in terms of costs and fees? And would I try, would I try as a subscription that costs me 10 euros per month, for example, it doesn't hurt me that much and I am more willing to try it because I ultimately feel there's something like an advantage behind it. Mm -hmm. But if these are 30 euros, you probably won't do it because you think, hey, I don't know, this is too much. Yeah, yeah. It's... Um... Yeah, I would I, I would refer to the target groups and ask this or or answer this question from the point of the target groups. Yeah, um, we're we're experimenting with pricing. I think in the, in the future we'll also tr try out like a kind of no brainer plan and just see how that will impact everything else. We're always we're of course a bit worried because a lot of companies just don't charge enough, specifically startups. Uh, that's actually. Mm -hmm. We got from this Y Combinator uh, school uh, thing. And it's more easy to go down than it is to go up. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Totally so we're like, if, yeah, revenues are growing. So maybe, you know, maybe it's working. But yeah, I, I know exactly what it's something I, I do think about as well. Yeah, but if you're thinking more specifically from, from the aspect of the needs of the different target groups, you can also think about to make some functionalities um, uh, add the price to a certain functionality. If you have a very risk aware person that if you want to have certain pre-formulated risk strategies, they cost you something or something like that. That's just what I mean that you think more from the, from the target groups, what they really need. And probably they need a lower barrier in terms of general price. And if they want to have more specific functionalities that fits to their target group, then they have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 a good idea. Yeah. Okay. Then probably looking to the time, going to the next step in terms of what do we do with all this information? So you have a certain view for different target groups. You have a certain feeling and a certain background of what is the reasoning and what do they need and where are the hurdles. Um, this is all part of how can you approach these different target groups in terms of content, information, and stuff to deliver to make yourself as a company more aware to the people and that they get certain relevance and resonance for you. Um, but it's probably not the best approach to target them with all your specific product details. People don't buy what what you do they buy why you do it and we need to somehow deliver something that people understand why you do it if you are talking in the simon sinek way of thinking about companies i don't know if you heard about the golden circle 
Have you ever heard about it? I don't think so. Doesn't ring. Okay, then let me share that with you because it's very interesting. Um, why some people are very uh, successful and and others are not. Um, you shared the deck with us after, yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So the why. Simon Sinek said, people don't want to do uh, what you do, but people buy why you do it. So you have a certain message, you have a certain position, you have a certain identification and identity and people know how you are. And here's a short explanation of that within that video. And I hope it works right now to give you a certain information what's behind that approach or and this mechanism of um, why. Can you hear the sound? Nope. Yeah. Maybe Sorry. If, if, uh, the link, if it's like on YouTube or something, you might be able to just open it on YouTube and share it. Actually, or, or you need to try and share your sound as well. But YouTube okay. might be the easiest. I, well, I have to search on YouTube where it is. I don't know if it will even share computer sound. You need to, in the yeah. share options, you need to see if you can. Uh... <clears throat> no, I guess I, it doesn't work. Um because I have my airports on. Okay, you can you can see it afterwards. It's probably the first five minutes of the TED talk and it's super important in terms of understand um, what what kind of companies doing um, when they try to approach different target groups. And I will probably explain it uh, in, in short term. So if, if people are doing marketing in a normal way, they are explaining what they do. We are the best car manufacturer. And then they explain how they do it in terms of we have the best leather seats and all that stuff. And their why is, hey, buy our car. And this is not very, very resonating. So what very um, successful companies do, they reverse the order of information. They start with why. So um, if you have, for example, Apple, um, Apple they do it the complete different way. They say, we want to challenge the status quo in everything we do. We want to, um, to do things differently. And how they do is that they beautifully design every product that they do and they are going into every detail, um, which leads to certain products in the what that deliver some results to you that are unique in terms of you can do everything with them and they are beautifully designed and you deliver to a certain ecosystem. And um, important is that you reverse the information of this, uh, the, the order of this information that you start from your why. And um, you are pitching not your product, but you're pitching why you are doing things. And to get this certain information, which is always a good starting point, um, for example, also a pitch presentation, or if you're approaching a VC, um, let's get back to our little work frame. And um, my, my question would be, how does the world for you looks like in five to 10 years, if you're thinking about a certain vision, not particularly for your um, company, but how does the world look like in five to 10 years? Sure. So one, one important why for us is that uh, we give people, we give normal people access to the tools that let them compete in a market that's driven by algos, bots, hedge funds, etc. Um, if you want to go even deeper, if, if, if you, you know, obviously like a big topic of our time is the growing gap between uh, the rich and the poor. And part of that, where that is, I mean, I say poor, let's say, you know, the, 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 the not rich. Uh, part of where that is coming from is because since literally the 80s, uh, the return on financial income has been 
disproportionately higher than the growth in salaries. And a large reason of that is that if you are a millionaire, you have access to hedge funds and private equity and fancy advanced tools uh, to which the normal person does not have access. And this already has started slowly to change. I mean, today you have, you know, the nutmegs, wealth, wealthy fies, wealth fronts, et cetera, which give access to normal people to funds to which previously they had to go to some scammy bank, scammy advisors, this whole like really bad experience that I don't know anyone who enjoys it. Um, and these new platforms have made it much easier for let's say our generation or for millennials specifically to invest. Now they haven't gone really far enough because what they do is they take your money, they put it into some black box passive investing fund and you lose out a lot of the upside that someone gets who has access to hedge fund or who has access to you know more advanced uh, trading tools, not to mention even things like high frequency trading, et cetera. What Coinro does is Coinro gives you access to something that is very powerful and lets you actually compete on a somewhat more equal footing to a lot of the professionals. And it does so in a very easy way. Now, this is the slightly longer version of it. I can say, mm -hmm. um, but in a way, Coinro is your personal hedge fund. That like Coinro allows you to run your own hedge fund. Like that's that's of course there's you know there are a lot of I it's think so easy. If if I may uh how about David versus Goliath? Um, yeah. I will, yeah, 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 probably it's it's um so what this why is and how do I identify myself or identify myself with a with a, a company is that it leads to a higher good. So the question is what is the higher good for uh for coin rule? Um what do you stand for? And the first thing that I've just heard is a little bit of the democratizing um, how to get financial successfully to make yes. it available for everyone. Yes, I, I'm not a big fan of this word democratizing because everyone is used, to it. but that's that's yeah. what we do. That's basically what we do. Um, f what FinTech has been doing is gradually make advanced things more and more available to normal people. And we're doing that for investing. Let's call it financial wealth, but it also can go more to, if you do it even, even further, you can talk about basic um, financial supply to make it a little bit more Robin Hood, something mm -hmm. like that. You know um, what's with Robin Hood? Robin Hood actually screws over their own users because they they, they <laughs> get the trades, they get the trades, they sell them to then the brokers who can then front run them in a uh, dark pool uh, and basically make money out of their own users. Like okay. that's the opposite of what we want to do. We want yeah. to let our users actually make the most of the market. Okay. But getting back to the vision of the world in five to ten years, what are the aspects that you that you foresee uh, that you feel? How does the world look like? If it's probably more also in the financial terms. So you mean like how the world looks basically with like in general with Coinru having made a big difference? No, without without Coinru, how does the world look like in five to ten years if it's going on like okay. um, that? Even retail investors now use advanced trading and bots. Like it's completely mm -hmm. normal for everyone to have their own trading bot. Mm -hmm. Like the way how at some point we will have robots in the house cleaning the house for us, you will have a robot trading and investing for you. Okay. Um, then like i don't want to get too much into like philosophy and economics but no this is important absolutely okay fine so here's one other thing um fixed income uh there used to be a time you would buy stocks they would pay you a dividend you would buy bonds they would pay your fixed income but obviously like if you look what's going on in financial markets this is increasingly becoming a complete mess 
and it's becoming more and more and more difficult. Or not, not even to mention, I, it's fun. you see, I'm a millennial. I didn't even mention a fixed income from savings because it's a ridiculous idea that doesn't even yeah. exist anymore. So for normal people, it's becoming increasingly difficult to get any form of fixed income, um, which is how ultimately you built up wealth unless you are you know, able to like sell a company or whatever, inherit money. Um, so as it's becoming more difficult, there is going to be a counter trend because people want to have some form of passive fixed income. Um, yeah. There will be, I think a lot of this will be driven through specifically also decentralized finance, cryptocurrencies, yada, yada, probably also in other ways that I'm not yet foreseeing. Um, but there will be a trend towards more people again having access to fixed income. And you will have systems that will change between the different assets that give you this fixed income. So for example, today I want my money uh, trading on an Ethereum protocol. Tomorrow I want to be lending my money. The day after I want my money made bond or wherever is the most valuable fixed income opportunity. Ultimately, I will have bots or investment tools that will be going out and bringing in some form of fixed income for me. Because why? Because people A, want fixed income, B, need fixed income, C, the markets are changing. The traditional markets are providing less of it. So there will be a counter trend of other tools and systems starting to become, to provide more of it. And I think this is where a lot of things will be heading in terms of financial markets. Okay. Sorry, that I, I like a lot to talk about these things, but obviously this, like is, this is super valuable because this leads to my approaches. What is the why of your company? For example, just as an idea, Navigator in a more complex financial world where it is more and more difficult to participate successfully due to certain circumstances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 very, very, very true. So this leads to this autopilot idea. Well, we call it the smart assistant. You know, sometimes in our yeah. a seven second pitch, we call ourselves the smart assistant for crypto trading or for trading. And these are all the elements for your story, how you are starting, for example, a pitch presentation, but also approaching VCs. You start with that, that they people, they can identify with your company and say, okay, I like the idea of uh, giving people access or let them participate in a very complex financial world, because I believe that everyone should have access And moreover, you are not always giving access, you are even given more control and you're giving success. If you are, if we're getting back to this three, three point formula. And now we are developing a certain story that you can deliver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for, it's, it's super important. It's something that we do a bit, like actually, if you look at our landing page right now, we have, I'll tell you our tagline. It's uh, coin who empowers traders to compete with professional algorithmic traders and hedge funds, no coding required. Um, and we actually, we did like A-B tests with which slogans convert the most. And this was actually the winner. So I think it's something that people do, do, do react to. Yeah, but there's a difference between a marketing punchline and um, something deeper. make people aware of and make them identify with your company that you can do story-wise. The one thing is advertisement in terms of marketing slogans, which is totally fine, don't get me wrong. But the other way is how do you make people inform more about your company and deal with your company and want to have more information and feel a certain identification that they say, okay, I like the approach, I like the idea, which sticks more than only is the product good or bad. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to, to attract people on a company sympathy level. You can call it something like this. Mm -hmm. 
you are standing they for like something. The brand. They see the brand. Yeah, it's all about the brand. Yeah. What does coin rule stand for? Is it only the more techy part in terms of you're delivering a smart solution, blah, 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 and you have to pay for it? Or what do you want to achieve? What is unique that your company really exists? I like that. We, we speak uh, as one thing also we do care about a lot. It's things like ethical investing and giving also the people the opportunity to actually make it easier for them to do ethical investing. So like we, we realistically, we don't currently do much in that regard, but it is something we care about and it's something we want to be reflected in what we let our leaders do. Um, and there's one other aspect of that. So actually, as I was saying earlier, briefly, a lot of our users are also based in countries like Indonesia, Brazil, Turkey, yeah. etc. And there is an element of additional access here. Uh, if you are today, if you're in Indonesia or in Turkey, it's not so easy for you to buy, I don't know, Apple stock or to participate. So these people have even less access than, than like a millennial in London. Um, and again, through decentralized finance, they can very much easier actually access these markets and get exposure to some of these assets than in the traditional financial system. And we're literally talking about 1 billion people, if not more, who are currently without really a straightforward way to access these opportunities. And it's not, not only already we're making this possible, but it's actually something we really care about. Like as a company, we want to make this possible. And this is something you have to tell the people that they stick to you on an emotional level. Say, okay, I like the basic idea of give people access in underbanked regions. Mm -hmm. With such a smart tool, and you are not only delivering this access, but also control, but also financial success. Just to just to clarify, yeah. that to, today you're not offering it, right? Like DeFi product. I mean, people always have to sync to the exchanges, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we are not yet DeFi. We don't yet connect to DeFi, no. Mm -hmm. uh, it's something where we, we have on the roadmap. It will depend on a few factors when we can actually start to implement that. But it's very much there. Like it's definitely a very important. Yeah, yeah. I think it would be great if you push it forward and like make it happen in this way. Also, can like use this narrative more that you give financial access in the first place and then the tools that make investing very easy. We actually, we had an article published uh, two years ago in, well, two years, is it already? No, like one and a half years ago uh, about uh, banking the unbanked with algorithmic trading. So it was a bit of a play <laughs> because a lot of people in the crypto space talk about banking the unbanked yeah, and yeah. a bit a uh, step further. Uh, uh, yeah. That's this is exactly what I'm looking for when it comes to stories and experiences, cases, something like that, that you already have talked about or that you have experienced on your own. Um, are there some other things that you have experienced on your own that leads to these, these Y levels? Um, are there certain personal experiences? Yeah, yes, uh, yes, to some extent. I mean, obviously, both the experience of working in the financial sector and seeing some of these things. Um, so kind of like just, you know, realizing what, like what a mess a lot of it is, unfortunately. Um, on a personal level, like, I mean, let me think about this. I'm sure there, like, there are some experiences, but like, it's more it's more like kind of far-fetched like yeah no i like i mean i come from I was born in moldova so i come from a very poor country we left moldova and we lived in a refugee camp in sweden for a few years when i was little um mm -hmm. so there's definitely like there is a certain like i do come from the third world like i was born in the third world um i grew up in frankfurt and like yeah yeah that's just kind of like I don't really relate that much with that part of my identity, but there is certainly like, you know, there, there is an element of that. Like, yeah, but this gives you credibility. If you can, if you can talk about it from your own experience, so you know how the circumstances are and that people 
don't have the access to certain financial systems and they always will not have the chance to build a certain wealth because they already don't have access. Mm -hmm. And now your, your audience sticks to you on an identification level and say, okay, I like the approach that they want to help these people. I definitely have the experience of watching my parents try to, you know, invest and just not knowing what they're doing and being pretty lost in the process. Um, you know, especially as like immigrants in Germany, you know, like, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think a lot of people struggle with that in general. Very good. These are all the examples that you can also deliver in a side sentence within the presentation so that you gain credibility within your audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's true, it's true. So if you're starting that you want to deliver access to certain groups and not only the super high educated crypto people, um, you are approaching on a different level. You're not approaching on a very niche, but you're giving people this identification level and you can give this credibility by your own experience. And now you get the people. It's actually interesting because a lot in the crypto space, like pretty much all our competitors, their approach is to focus on really advanced traders. Because of course, everyone knows advanced traders will have a bigger portfolio. They know what they're doing. Let's just build something for them. But in a way, we are taking exactly the opposite approach. We want to make something really accessible, really easy to use. And that's really where we kind of have our USP in this, in this space. Absolutely. And now with that somehow grid that we have developed over the last almost two hours, you are able to deliver your different stories. So you can really go from this why, what do you want to try to achieve, look to your certain target groups and define what kind of barriers you will probably solve or where can you under um, support them in trying to achieve certain things or benefit certain things and this is just from two hours and you can do that again and again and refine it and so put a certain messaging house for yourself that you are able to target your different target groups mm -hmm. no this is this is actually really helpful this is really useful um this is definitely like it helps to kind of shape and clear the thinking because of course a lot of it you know we both speak about it a lot think about it a lot write it down but like this is a really helpful exercise and also yeah, and it's a, just just to add that it's it's a different way to approach um people not delivering upfront all the different technical information but give them a softer um access to you as a company and give a greater potential to identify and then you can start to go on this benefit level what you all can deliver with your different solution mm -hmm. yeah 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 makes 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 sense that's definitely good same for the investors uh, out Absolutely. of the 500 investors you meet you might meet a few of them that actually have the same values as you same back brown story personal stories and that that will definitely resonate with them mm -hmm. yeah 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 true we have yeah we meet something like we meet people who we feel immediately that it makes sense to them and it's actually funny because sometimes we speak to like a lot of angel investors in a place like london they come from like the financial sector just kind of you get these like slightly older banker types and for example with them it doesn't really resonate like they don't, they're like, who, who, these people shouldn't be trading, you know, but obviously that's exactly the kind of thinking we are opposed to, you know. But we are, for example, are doing these kind of exercises with um, large cap or middle cap companies, for example, mm -hmm. infrastructure um, service providers like airports and stuff. They are trying to approach certain specific target groups and, um, we can elaborate on that and find a certain messaging house, how they want to be perceived at the market and how they want to be um, somehow, yeah, be identified and what do they stand for. And um, for example, we achieved that we put one of these different airport providers that they are seen now very, very 
different thinking, uh, not so traditional, trying to think to do new things. And we support that with then uh, certain types of content that we deliver on certain different touch points. And this is then for you the next step, going from this message house and going from these different approaches for the different um, target groups, also to, to check where can I reach these different target groups and at what kind of touch points. That's yeah, that's an interesting. That's one one thing actually we're thinking about because uh, wh which channels can we go into even more specifically to reach exactly these people? Uh, and yeah, and one example that we have found out is, for example, the specific landing page for the B two B sector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's definitely that's definitely something we need. Yeah. And if you're going more into detail about these different target groups, you can think about them. So. Probably there are people who are not so familiar and uh, with crypto and they don't access Telegram or something like that. They will probably Google and then they lead to a certain other landing page, for example, where you are more um, not into details of that, but you're delivering more of this, for example, control aspect or more of this, hey, invest 10 euros per month and you get access to full control and you're um, increasing your chances of uh, financially participate in the success and all these different types of information. And you have this, this groundwork done right now in a first step to deliver more reasoning on the positive sides, but also understanding the negative sides where you can find certain arguments against it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is basically it. Um, the question is, do you have any further questions that I can help you right <laughs> now with? <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of information. Um, yeah, lot, absolutely. Um, let me think about this. Uh, if anything immediately comes to mind. Yeah, one question maybe in terms of the B2B side also. Mm -hmm. I mean, like our B2B customers or those funds we spoke to, they're interested a lot in what we have to offer, but they need certain additional elements and features. And of course, I mean, it's always the startup life. You have a massive resource bottleneck. Um, I'm just really afraid if we start rushing after the B2B, we lose track of our core target group where we things are working and we just need to continue on the journey. But if we are trying to catch like both sides, we fail to catch either. But do you think it makes sense to just focus on the one target group or should we also look at the B2B side? The question is, what can you offer them? Um, if you want to get a certain traction, do the B2B people help you to get even access to a larger group of users? I don't think so because at the end of the day, you do, you won't have a B two B two C model. So, so what we can get from them is like contracts, basically. So we'll charge them, I don't know, twenty k per year for using CoinRoo, uh, and obviously that's like a huge amount of revenue in one go. Whereas uh, with the smaller user, with like the B two C users, it's it's more a numbers game. We just need to get a lot of them through the door whilst gradually improving the product. I would probably more focus on the B2C side to get a certain track and look a little bit wider than only the niche of the experienced users. And for now get the B2B users access as a normal B2C user, um, but probably um, yeah, tell them that probably later on you will have some certain offerings in the terms of a B2B model or probably even invite them in terms of, um, let's think together about what would be helpful for you in a P2P perspective. What kind of functions, what kind of solutions do you, do you need to um, offer this on a large scale? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, the, 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 the interesting thing is like, the things that the B2B guys want, they will also be beneficial for the B2C guys. It's just not something necessarily we would prioritize just yet. So it's kind of yeah. the, the priorities trade-off. Um, what else? Uh, 
In terms of, do you have any experience with paid marketing on Twitter? Uh, me personally not, but we would have experts for that. Mm. I'm just curious because a lot of our users, like specific crypto is very Twitter and no one really speaks my, like obviously everyone knows Google ads, everyone knows uh, like Facebook, etc. And I'm curious to try out Twitter. It's just the only thing is we don't really do mar paid marketing yet. But I was thinking if, you know, if you guys know more about this, that would be an interesting course. That's highly depending on, on the topic at the end of the day. I have more experience in the classic financial sector. And there are a lot of journalists, for example. So this is a quite good uh, touch point to approach to these financial guys uh, who are more on the conservative press oriented way. I have no experience with the crypto community on Twitter. So sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. no idea. What I can recommend is really take small money and try and learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. it. That makes sense. We will do that as soon as we close uh, this current funding round. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I will send you the information and then you have my email address as well. Okay. And if there are any further questions, just let me know and we can sure. just chat. Thanks, thanks very much. This was re really, really interesting, really insightful. Cool. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ram. Thank Excellent, you guys. guys. So uh, yeah, just to wrap it up, uh, it's been intense. I think uh, you did very well, Oleg, uh, uh, all there. Um, so all, obviously when you have the team, uh, it's a bit less stressful on your brain, <laughs> but- uh, yeah. My brain can take it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Robert, please do send, uh, send all the info, CC, uh, myself and Maria. Yeah. And uh, yeah, tomorrow is uh, the next session. So uh, thank you very much, guys. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good day. Have good. a good day. Bye-bye. Tim, Bye. you can go.